I'm going to show you how to craft eye-catching pop-out graphics with captivating text effects using the power of Keva. You know, mastering these designs could skyrocket your sales for your print-on-demand business and lead to more money in your pocket. Let's dive in and get started. Okay, so welcome to my computer screen. What I've done is I've created two pages basically with the same dimensions, 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. And the first thing I want to do is on page one, we're going to create some text. So we're going to click on heading. We'll take up this font size to about 350. And now we want to choose a nice, thick, bold font. So we're going to click on the font picker here. I already have one chosen. It's called Lot. I really like this font because there's a lot of great right angles on a number of letters for this particular font style. So given the fact that I'm going to be creating a camping related design, I'm going to use the word camp in this design. So we're going to double click on that with caps locks on. I'm going to type in CA and we'll increase the size of it. Great. Now I'm going to duplicate it, bring it down and double click on it and choose and type in MP. Okay, so we're going to zoom in a little bit and now I want to make sure I want to make sure I'm properly aligned. I might have to increase the size of MP a little bit in order so that both margins will be, you know, nice and straight underneath each other. Now we're going to decrease the amount of space between the top two letters and the bottom two letters. Okay, and I think that works pretty well. Great, I'm going to toggle that and we're going to increase the size of it. We'll zoom out. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and center it, which there we go. We're good. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to create two rectangles that are going to go onto the space here to the left of the letter C, A, and P. To do so, we're going to hit R on the keyboard in order to get a square. And it doesn't matter that it's a different color. In fact, you want it to be a different color so that you'll be able to work and see how things are lining up more efficiently. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to try to line up the bottom of the square to the bottom of the letter M. And then we're going to click and we're going to drag down and we're going to get the top part of the square just to meet with the top point of the letter M. And then I'm going to click out, click back on it. Whilst holding the shift key, I'm going to use my cursor keys to move the square to the left. And I'm going to continue doing so until that point of the letter M meets with the square and in that particular case you might want to let go of the shift key and then just tap on your arrow keys which will allow the graphic to move one pixel at a time so we we'll scroll down here okay so i'm pretty happy about that for now what we want to do now is we want to stretch out this particular rectangle a little bit more so we'll click on it stretch it out just a little bit more and now I'm going to hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. And I'm going to bring it up here so that we can work on the top portion of the design. So I'm going to zoom in. All right. And I'm just going to head up over here. Now, again, I'm holding the Shift key and I'm moving the rectangle to the right. It's moving 10 pixels at a time. And what I want to do is I want to try and bring the rectangle to meet and to cover a part of the C, but not too much that people won't be able to make out that it's the letter C. So now I'm letting go of the shift key and I'm bringing it down with my down cursor key. And I'm quite happy with the way the bottom part has matched up with the letter C. But we need to decrease the top portion of the rectangle to match with the letter C at the top. Okay, and I'm quite happy about that. And I'm going to zoom out. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend the left side of the rectangle to meet up with the bottom rectangle. Okay, so we're looking pretty good as it stands right now. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna change the color of all of the elements in this design to a color that is going to complement the image I'm going to be utilizing. And the best way to do that is to actually bring the image onto the canvas right now. So let me just do that right now. I went on to Recraft earlier on and I asked Recraft to generate an image of a campfire with a white background. So I'm just gonna drag it in over here. And as you can see here, we have the image and I'm just going to move it off to the side here. And when I click on the letters and I choose the color picker, rather the text color, you can see here that Canva has already extrapolated the major colors of the image. And as you can see, we got this nice yellowy orange, which is what I'm going to change the color of the other elements to just by clicking on it. We're going to click on the top one. I'm going to click on the color as well here. Now we'll do the rectangles. So we're going to click on color, we'll choose that yellow orange again, the same thing here. And now we can delete the image of the campfire because we don't need it right now. What I want to do is now I want to download 
this component of the design so that I can bring it back into Canva as one whole component. So we're going to click on share, click on download, and I want to make sure that page one is the only thing that is toggled. Make sure PNG is selected as the file type. Click done, click on download, and then just wait for Canva to download the image to my system, which it has done. There it is over there. I have it in a window just off camera. So let's now head to page two. I'm going to bring that design onto the canvas. Okay, here we go, it's there. Let's change the background color of the canvas to black so that we can see how things are going to be progressing. What we wanna do now is we wanna get rid of the white background. So we'll click on that, choose edit photo, BG remover. We'll wait for Canva to do its magic so that it will delete the background, the white, which is what we don't need. There you go, we have it. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stretch out the design over the canvas. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bring it in, we're going to wait for Canva to show us where we're centered here. Okay, so we're centered across. Um, I think that's pretty good as it stands right now. Sometimes you might just have to eyeball it. Okay, so let's bring back in the campfire. Okay, so here is the campfire. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on edit photo. I'm gonna choose BG remover in order to remove the background of the campfire. But if you notice, we've got a lot of this white area part of the flame, which is not something that I want to have. So if I click on sort of like these little lines here in the white circle on BG Remover, it will allow me to continue erasing further. And I can adjust the brush size. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to get rid of some of the flames here that is just far too white, that's not going to look good on the design. And if you make a mistake, you can always go back and bring it back by restoring it. I think what we'll do is we'll get rid of this like this. Let's see how that's going to look. So we'll click on the back button here. We'll have a little bit more at the top, but for all intents and purposes, that's okay. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring the image and I'm just going to lie it. Let's say, let's bring it over here where part of the wood is going to meet the corner of the bottom rectangle. Now, I'm going to increase the size of it. And again, you need to play around with it. And what I wanna do is I want to increase the size until the base of the campfire is effectively going into where letter M should be starting, okay? And again, I can actually increase it a little bit more. And now it's time to start getting rid of portions of each of those layers here so that we can get back this black space. So since we're toggled on the top layer, I'm going to grab the bottom handle and I'm gonna start increasing it until the bottom margin meets up with the bottom part of the top rectangle. I'll click on the top one now, okay? And I'll do the same thing, but this time I'm going to work in reverse and I'm going to bring it down and as you can see in doing so, I have effectively cropped out the top and the bottom layers of the fire, of the campfire, in order to bring back that space between the two. I'm going to crop the entire image of the campfire to meet up with the borders of the rectangle. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on share. We're going to download this. So we're gonna click on download, making sure that we are on page two. We'll click on done, click on download, we'll wait for Canva to download it. Okay, now that it's downloaded, we're gonna add a page. We're gonna change the background color to black. And then we're going to bring in the image. Okay, now that it's been uploaded and placed onto the canvas, click on edit photo, click on BG remover to get rid of the white. Okay, and then we're just going to stretch it out and increase it on the size of the canvas. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the entire image a little bit of a drop shadow. So we'll click on shadows here. We'll click on drop shadow. Okay, we're gonna change the black to an orange color that will complement this design. Okay, and we'll decrease the, di the distance. Let's bring it down to about 35 and the intensity down to 35 as well. And you wanna increase the blur amount, you can. Basically, you can play around with it to your heart's content. And then when you're happy, obviously you can just remove the black background and then download it with a transparent background and you're good to go to uploading it to your respective print-on-demand platform.
Here are a few more samples to motivate and inspire you to create some amazing designs for your own print on demand business. Enjoy! Now I hope you got something out of this video. I used ReCraft to generate the images for these designs, but you can use any generator of your choice. What's important is that you start creating and uploading more quality designs based on the season, event, or holiday that is forthcoming. And here's a pro tip. Aim for events at least six weeks ahead. Why? So your eager customers will have ample time to browse, order, and receive their purchases hassle-free. Now I want to invite you to click on the thumbnail that has just appeared on your screen now bent on helping you to take your print-on-demand business to the next level. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you there.